welcome to structural dynamics class so in this class we study about multi degree of freedom systems so multi degree of freedom system is a close resemblance of the real systems so if we take say 10 uh, story building uh, we can convert that into 10 degree of freedom system a three story building can be converted to three degree of freedom system if the vibration is along one direction so today we study about multi degree of freedom systems and uh, how to formulate the equation of motion for multi degree of freedom system and how to solve that equation we'll discuss those things today so if we look at the structure or a building you can see this one this is a three story typical three story building now how do we convert this three story building into a idealized system so if we take this three story system so that can be converted into say framing system or supporting system and slabs so here you can see the dotted line okay so dotted line between two floors signifies that the total load or mass in between this can be concentrated at this level roof level at this floor level this floor level this floor level so mass 1 can be calculated by the summation of say mass of this slab so let's first calculate weight weight of this slab beam set fl uh, first floor slab level half the column uh, weight of the first floor and half the column weight of second floor and plus half the uh, weight of wall load half the weight of wall load all put together will and uh, total weight we take that is w1 and if we divide by gravity then we get mass 1 so like that we calculate mass 2 so mass 2 will come from weight of slab 2 plus weight of beams at the this floor level second floor level and then columns uh, weight of columns at third floor half of the weight of columns at third floor again half of the weight of columns at second floor half wall load from uh, floor 3 and half wall load from floor 2 so all put together we will get weight at this level if we uh, divide this by gravity we get mass at that level similarly at uh, floor 3 3 so in floor 3 we don't have say upper floor so that's why only half of the column of floor 3 half of the wall weight of at floor 3 and slab weight along with beam weights will come so that divided by gravity will get mass 3 so m1 m2 m3 are masses at individual floor level so this is we are discussing about the lateral load not gravity load lateral load so in lateral load if we convert this into say a cantilever kind of thing so this is first floor this is second floor this is a third floor point so the mass which is lumped here will be the mass which is lumped here can come from half of this one the mass which is lumped at this point will be in this uh, zone the mass which is lumped at this floor level will be from this zone so this much mass will not be considered so that is called missing mass so because the acceleration levels at that uh, location will be less even when you look at the vibration of that so it will be something like this so in this uh, acceleration levels will be less so that's why inertia force contribution in that zone will be less so now we are with this idealized 3 degree of freedom system so mass 1 at floor 1 mass 2 at floor 2 mass 3 at floor 3 now we need to calculate the stiffness 1 at this floor level so we already know that in uh, the building with shear behavior so each column will give a stiffness equivalent to 2l ei by l cube something like this okay so by moving it with one unit so the force required to move this by one unit is 2l ei by l cube or h cube h cube so in this direction we have four columns so four columns will offer stiffness that will become four times ei by h cube so this e and i should be from the individual column in that direction so similarly we get k2 stiffness to stiffness 3 and then c1 is damping at floor level 1 c2 is damping at floor level 2 c3 is damping at floor level 3 so now with this idealized three degree of freedom system how do we convert this into a equation of motion so this is mass spring damper system so the same thing we are representing in mass spring 
damper system. So, mass 1 is represented here damping 1 and stiffness 1, mass 2 is represented here damping 2 and stiffness 2, mass 3 damping 3 stiffness 3. So, these are relative properties between two floors. So, if say the displacement at floor 3 and displacement of floor 2 will is same, then there will be no force in between. So, displacement at floor 2 and displacement at floor 1 is same, then there will be no force in between. So, like that we have represented in this one springs. So, if there is relative displacement between P2 mass 2 and mass 3, then only there will be force in this spring. If both the motions are same, then there cannot be any force or resistance from the offered from the spring or say columns from there. So, in order to set this in motion, we take this assumption first that is displacement at point mass 3, displacement at point center of mass at point uh, mass 2 and mass 1. So, these are represented by displacement at mass 1, displacement at mass 2, displacement of center of mass 3. So, this u3 is greater than u2, u2 is greater than u1. So, that means this displacement is higher than this, so that there is elongation in this spring and u2 is greater than u1, so that there is elongation in this second spring, so that means second floor columns and if u1 is greater than 0, so that means there is elongation. Now, if we take this into consideration and then draw free body diagram for each mass. So, let us see this mass 1. So, mass 1 is moving forward so with a displacement value u1. So, if this is moving with displacement value u1, we already know a D. Lambert's principle moving mass generates inertia force opposing the motion. So, motion is in forward direction, inertia force will be in the backward direction. So, what is the value of inertia force? It is m1 u1 double dot and then because this mass is moved in the forward direction of this displacement, then there will be elongation in this spring. So, the elongation in this spring will force or will try to pull the mass back. So, this is the pulling force that is k1 u1. So, the pulling force that is the resistance force will be equivalent to stiffness times displacements and correspondingly damping force that is uh, proportional to the velocity. So, u1 is displacement, u1 dot is velocity and u1 double dot is acceleration. So, now velocity is c1 u1 dot, so opposing. Now, this and then force p1 is acting here. Now, let us come to relative displacement between mass 2 and mass 1. Now, here if mass 2 is also moving by the same value as u1, then there would not be any force in this spring. So, what we assumed here is u2 is greater than u1. So, if u2 is greater than u1, so that means there is elongation in spring 2. So, because there is elongation in spring 2, it will try to pull these two masses together again back. So, that is how this force is represented k2 multiply by u2 minus u1. So, it is pulling these two masses towards each other. A similarly, damping force that is C2 into U2 dot minus U1 dot. So, so these forces are represented. Okay, and again here, moving mass generates inertia force opposing motion. So, this is inertia force at second mass level. And then P2 is the external force applied at mass 2 level. And then when it comes to mass 3, again the same thing, mass 3 and mass 2. So, K3 into U3 minus U2, C3 into U3 dot minus U2 dot. So, again this is inertia force. So, now we want to write this all these forces at one place. So, this first degree of freedom, second degree of freedom, third degree of freedom. So, let us write equation of equilibrium for each degree of freedom separately. Now, mass 3. So, force P3 is acting there. So, P3 let us represent this by P. So, P3 T, okay, M3 U3 double dot k3 u3 minus u2 and c3 u3 dot minus u2 dot. So, m if, if I write equilibrium here m3 u3 double dot plus k3 u3 minus u2 c3 u3 dot minus u2 dot is equal to force uh, 3 acting at that level. Now, let us write the, the same thing for mass 2 at center of mass 2. So, this is p2. So, m2 u2 double dot 
k2 u2 minus u1 c2 u2 dot minus u1 dot so on the other side we have k3 u3 minus u2 k3 u3 dot minus u2 dot so if we write all in the form of algebraic sum equivalent to p2 so that is inertia force so k2 into this value we are putting here and then this value we are putting here this value we are putting here and this value we are putting here so here u3 minus u2 oh this should be negative sign and this should be negative sign so this is not positive sign this is negative sign so by rearranging these terms what we get is m2 u2 double dot k2 into u2 minus u1 plus c2 into u2 dot minus u1 dot and just one second this is negative sign negative sign Okay. Similarly, we get P1. Okay. So, M1 U1 double dot plus K1 U1 plus C1 U1 dot K2 U2 1 minus 2 minus U1 C2 into U2 dot minus U1 dot is equal to P1. So, if you rearrange this one, we get M1 U1 double dot plus C1 plus C2 into U1 dot minus C2 U2 dot plus K1 plus K2 into U1 minus K2 into U2. So, if we write these things in the matrix form what we get is the matrix m1 into u1 double dot c1 plus c2 into u1 dot plus k1 plus k2 into u1 is equal to first equation p1 m2 into u2 double dot plus if we take this one minus c2 into u1 dot plus c1 plus c3 c2 plus c3 into u dot so something like this multiply by this vector this row multiplied by this vector so that will be we will get the uh, p2 equation and this p3 equation so this it the same thing we are writing in the matrix form so if we re rewrite that m into u double dot plus c into u dot plus k into u is equal to p so like this is similar to equation of motion for single degree of freedom system whereas this only m c and k so m was representing a point mass there here it is a matrix and C was representing damping. Here it is representing damping matrix and K stiffness of one floor. Here it is representing stiffness of the structure which is in the form of this matrix and P was a force acting at center of mass. Here it is acting a vector which is acting at three centers of mass. Now mass matrix M1, M2, M3 is diagonal. So this clearly shows that off diagonal times terms are zero. So it is uncoupled from the point of view of mass and coupled from the point of view of dis, uh, damping and coupled from the point of view of stiffness so stiffness matrix and uh, sorry damping matrix and stiffness matrix so there are some important properties of uh, this matrices so mass matrix m c matrix and then k matrix are symmetric matrices so symmetric matrices means what it's something like k i j is equal to k j i means uh, i through j -th column term is equal to j through i -th column term this is a symmetric matrix <coughs> they are positive definite all these matrices are positive definite okay so that means the determinant is not zero it is a, a positive value so k is representing the rigid body motion so rigid body motion is prevented that's why it is positive definite k and m is becoming positive definite because there are all non-zero terms are there so m1 m2 m3 are some real masses they are not fictitious mass they are real masses and then c as associated with k and m this is becoming positive definite so these three mass matrix stiffness matrix and damping matrix matrices all three matrices are symmetric and positive definite because we are dealing with the real systems so in summary what we had discussed in this uh, class so we had discussed how a complex system can be idealized as multi degree of freedom system and then from multi degree of freedom system how to generate equation of motion so by giving say relative uh, displacements displacement of say upper floor is slightly higher than the lower floors so that's how we have uh, even uh, drawn the free body diagram and then took all the associated forces and uh, uh, wrote the equilibrium of each point mass and then finally converted that into uh, a matrix so this matrix mu double dot plus uh, cu dot plus ku is equal to p is exactly similar to a single degree of freedom system 
So where single degree of freedom system properties are mass stiffness and damping properties of one a floor, here multi degree of freedom system it is a matrix which is uh, representing all the floors. And then uh, uh, displacement, velocity and acceleration are related to one point mass in single degree of freedom system whereas in multi degree of freedom system it is a vector. And force in single degree of freedom system is acting at center of mass of the point mass and force vector here is uh, acting at all the centers of masses. And we will uh, study the solution of this one how to solve uh, numerically multi degree of freedom system in the next class.